Yes, jungle can feel like there are 20,000 decisions you can make and all of them could be right and all of them could be wrong. But really, that's just used to justify when you make a bad decision or play terribly. And so I'm going to show you one simple tactic that can adjust any game you're in so you can stop sucking a jungle like you're seeing in these clips and justify it with your bad decisions. So you can always fix your jungle pathing no matter what happens in game and honestly so that no one can stop you and you can climb astro fast. This was a request from a private for Kaido GG Discord to kind of constructively flame these junglers and show how they could have actually had a positive impact instead of a negative impact. Let's go. We have basically... I think some of the absolute worst jungling I've seen in Diamond and Below. Yes, this person has been Diamond. And the reason is, basically they make every decision that I would suggest to you guys in coaching and in the courses incorrectly. And I just kind of want to address this because obviously a lot of the time we look at, you know, the best junglers and how they jungle and the challenger and all this is like, look at this, this is what you must do. But then we don't always look at, hey, what must you not do? Or what does that look like when I don't do the recommended strategy, right? Okay, I say, guys, we have to turn left here. People ask, okay, well, you know, what happens if I turn right, Rukayu? That's what this video is for. And also because, you know, I can't always 1v1 coach literally everyone. Um, so this should provide a little bit of, hey, I tend to do these things. I can see why it doesn't work out. So obviously this is a level one invade by the Jarvan. There's just no reason for this whatsoever. I hate this. You know this. You know, bot lane need to get to bot lane. I, I found this profile through scouting and fortunately was able to secure this replay from another player in the game because <laughs> I can't get replays of my own games or anybody else's this patch. It's all glitched for me. So, Jarvan starts the invade for this blue, snacks it up. All right, all right, all right, all right. Lee Sin is let through. He's not banned for some particular reason. Ban this champion. Absolutely broken right now. He's going to go ahead and take this quadrant. All right. And now you're thinking, but look, he got away with it. Okay. Okay. You get away with it. Now what? Lisa will find you. He's going to be here. And he will say, whoa, 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 where's my stuff? And what's he going to do when he finds out? Either knee jerk back here when you gank top lane, take all this and gank your bot lane. Vertical jungling. Or he's going to crash into you here, push you out, kill you, gank this lane, cut here, use prior for this pressure, and you're out of the game, right? So it's better just to full clear, especially in Javan. This guy's pretty bad at clearing. So he's going to go back to base. Lee Sin's going to be spotted on the ward. Now, Jarvan's gone back to base for a longsword. Lee Sin will presume that he's going to be on the red Raptors and Krugs, which is why when you do these kinds of plays, it's best to not base. It's best to not base. In fact, I like leaving the wolves. Why? Because Lee Sin will hop over the wall, do the wolves, and be like, I'm on my way. I'm going to farm. And then he gets here. He's like, whoa, 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 where's my stuff? And that's when Jarvan is like, oh, he's on red first, then Krugs. Loop back to the Raptors, you dragged him, Lisa might show up here after realizing it's all gone, but nothing you can do about it. So leave this as a distraction, and now of course you can cut across to take this, gank bot lane, he's like, uh, and then if he does show top lane, you can invade this, right, or just at least control your blue side quadrant. Perfect. However, let's observe what occurs. Yasuo kills the fiddle six mid lane. Yeah, we have a fiddle six mid lane, I don't know why. We're taking the wave, and Lisa is ridiculously strong. Lifesteal, Q missing HP proc, and... Remember, not to put too fine a point on it, but I highly doubt the Leeson would leave this to rotate to this to get here in time for a kill. He may still get a kill, but I don't think if he's got nothing to do, he would be necessarily in this position, specifically because the Wolves weren't here, then he rotated, and all of this is because Jarvan wanted to, vote, to invade for some particular reason. Like, it's not what you need to do here as Jarvan. Botline actually ends up getting some kills here onto the Cogmore. He starts to go Raptors, and now he knows that Leeson's going to go to the bottom side. For some reason, he's flexing from the top side to the bottom side. Emerald Diamond MMR, ladies and gentlemen. Leeson say, well, I'm going to do the blue. Jarvan says, yes, hello. And of course, there's a flash over the wall. Bot lane are like, yeah, maybe we can do something. All around stupid jungling, right? 327, you have 12 CS. Same as, same as Leeson. You both have a kill each. You are literally equal. So why do it? You gotta do things in jungle for advantages. This is not giving you an advantage. All right, you are you are literally lateral. Now we know that the Lee Sin has two decisions here. Do I go top side to this quadrant, invade here, and do something top lane, or do I know that you know I'm kind of in a rough spot? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna re I'm gonna rehash that because if it was a little later for the Lee Sin, then you definitely want to go bot side, right? Because you have four minute twenty Krugs, four minute forty Raptors, and such. For him now, because it's early in 3.30 when he respawns, he's got to go topside, essentially. Or he can try and contest this and refist it out. 
But red side bot lanes and base. So he's going to go top side. There we go. Okay, I haven't seen this at all from that perspective. All I know is I saw some highlights from the job and I said, I got to get that replay because this is ridiculous. So Lee Sin goes top side and now knows that Jarvan's in the blue side quadrant. So he knows he can steal this away and Jarvan should presuppose that it's gone. And now you accept that Lee Sin takes it and it's done. What do we do, ladies and gentlemen? The best play. Cut down to Snectus. Take his respawn. You know, Snectus is super quick. Then take the respawn and the respawn. Currently, he's getting all your level 1 camps. So who cares about level 1 camps? Uh, not me. Do you? I don't. These are respawns. We love the respawns. The respawns are juicy fresh. Level 4. Level 4. And it gives you the ability to say, hey, my Ezreal Zyro lane, which is a good lane, has killed the Cogmo and the Cogmo Lulu lane. Maybe I should snowball that. And boom. Despite all of my reservations about the strategy from this Jarvan, despite everything I have said, and this is true for many things, what is the way out? Ask yourself. I've made a few mistakes as a jungler. What is the way out to find win condition salvation? And this Java might say, look, great invade by me. I'm amazing. Back to base for Longsword. I'm amazing. And then think, oh, I better go to my top set. Oh, but wait, he's going to my blue. Because the Lee Sin spent time killing the Yasuo, he will assume that the Javan's already done and already gone to this side. So he's like, oh, maybe I can do this, right? So now Javan has a way to bend this, this, this sort of uh, greed by the Lee Sin for the blue, which was dumb. And it was, of course, a nice rotation and collapse. I don't think we should be in that situation, but good job. Now the Javan go left and not right. Unironically, actually connecting it to the beginning part of this jungle detail <laughs> by referencing directions. Let's see what happens. Doesn't even think that the Lee Sin could be here. He has to know that the Lee Sin is here. All right, Lee Sin shows up, gets a smite. He's got the red. And now it's a pickaxe versus a longsword. It's a pickaxe versus a longsword. Lulu's rotated out of base with Pryo. All right. And it's not, let me, let me, more, let me more state this. If you're the Javan, you got to watch your bot lane, which is why I said it, just go for the scuttle crab. Because if you go for scuttle, boom, it's gone. She walks over this, we see her, she's going to stop. And of course, if you're here and you see this, oh my God, Pryo. 4v2 goon squad, like it's so perfect. The Lulu's just moving up to Rome because there's a nice crash here, and the Zyrus got to match it, so it's a good Rome by the Lulu, but because of the Javan's power thing, he shouldn't be here. Now, obviously, everyone's gonna rotate. Yasuo's low, Lee Sin shield, Lulu shield, the champion's damage. He goes back in, just leave, just leave. Do not go back and walk away. In a lost and doom scenario, the best thing you can do is actually just leave and cut down. Just say, oopsie, wrong path. Again, another way out. And he just decides not to do that. All right, now the Teemo rotates over. Zyra rotates over. We miss the E. That's unfortunate. Go for the Ignite on the Fiddle. Is it enough? Lee goes the Q for the Gap Close into the Safeguard. Lulu Shield as well. Zyra he hits one more. We'll do it. Never mind. Plant damage is not enough. <laughs> oh, man. Really, really lethal. So now the Javan is in a situation where I think his team are a little frustrated. Uh, Yasuo is frustrated. Zyra's going way too deep here. Uh, Yasuo definitely could have helped a little bit. Uh, Jarvan's not, where's he going? See, now it's silly. Where's he going? Like, I understand that the, the Zyra and the Yasuo are going too far. I fully acknowledge this from both, like, from a jungle perspective. But you should see this right now. Even if you're pinging her off and saying, listen, please come back. This is just too much. I don't want to do this anymore. Which is fair play. But why do you as the jungler get to play like a monkey and nobody else? Eh? You got to think about that too. I say that sarcastically to myself because sometimes I do an aggressive play and I die and then I'm annoyed that no one helped me and then of course my team makes aggressive plays and they're annoyed I didn't help them so I don't get to be hypocritical and I try to think about that a bit more lately um, in terms of my plays and it's helped a lot so just to kind of put that into your mind so as soon as he I know he wants to go do these things now but he should really be here and this water is absolutely well it's a great wood actually but uh, we know these camps are up like even from the Yosuo we know these camps are up um, and if Javan had just taken everything, I think this game's completely different. Javan should cut into rotate here. Let's see what, what, ha what happens, actually. I think they saw him go down. They saw him cut across, so he telegraphed the move. Oh, the triumph. Oh, that is so tragic. He did get the Lulu, though. Ah, oh, but Javan shouldn't be there, man. If Javan's here, you, would, you kill the Yasuo. Your, your Zyra lives. Uh, the Lulu dies, and you get the respawn of his uh, of Grump and Wolves level 4. So you've offset the fact you didn't take this level 4, and you get these level 4. Massive, no? Absolutely massive. I'm quite, I'm quite intense about this video because I'm, I don't know why. I'm just hyped up. <laughs> I like watching these kinds of things sometimes and being a little bit more, you know, 
um, Gordon Ramsay about it. I like being, I mean, everyone's here to improve and have fun, but sometimes it's nice to get a little bit uh, sarcastic and dry, <laughs> drier with people. So he gets this, obviously it's an overcommittal by the Zyra, by the Yasuo, but now, now you're doing, right, he's doing exactly what I said he should do, two minutes later at the cost of a huge gold lead. Well, it's only 200, but it, does, it doesn't feel like that, does it? What's Lee Sin at? Yeah, 3.3k gold for the Lee Sin, 2.1 for the Jarvan. And now he's waiting, he's waiting. We can gank this. Why are we waiting so long? This, like, all you gotta do here is jump and is use eyeballs and be like, this wave is pushing. There's one, two, three, four, five little red minions and a full stacked cannon wave. The bot line of Ezreal and Zyra want this to push in for level six. You know, which is the next six comes after five. Um, we run it, it's pushing in. So, you know, if Lulu's dead, which she is, go. Does this guy flash up again? No, he doesn't. He's burnt it because we saw that in the game. He should be going right now. He's waiting for the Zyra, but there's a time and a place for that. Okay, you can wait, you can wait a little bit, but like now you gotta go. The Zyra's position, go. Go, go, go. Nope. Can we get anything here still? Let's see. Like, I, I know, I, I understand the scenario. Do not results based if he gets a gank here. It's still a good, now it's still a good gank. I'm just unhappy with the amount of wait time we've had. I do feel like we still could have killed the Cog more easier already. Like, you wait, waited for the waves to meet. This should be a death here. Double root, beautifully done. Combo, EQ, smooth. So like, that's fine, but I don't think it needed that much time, right? Oh, man. In the Habits video I just released on the main channel, I needed someone just sitting in a bush. I couldn't have done this beforehand. I would have found the footage I needed. <laughs> anyway. The true death ring granted us a, a Warwick moment, so hopefully he enjoyed the cinematic uh, zoom out I gave him. I'm sure he did. He, he did, I think. Anyway, we're going to watch this guy go back here. Now, because he's still in bot lane, he's going to take everything there. Lulu now is tempo again from mid lane because uh, we have the shove and crash. We can go ahead and do the dragon. That's fine. But now Lee Sin has control of the top side. It is water. We do see that, thusly. Now we're going to go for the red invade here. This is actually, this is fine. But then the, the fiddle six moves over. Now you've got to realize that it's doomed, right? Adaptability. We see that the Lulu is by herself. We know Cogmore's on turret. We know this guy's going to reset because we saw him reset. Um... And we know that the Cassie could enter the fight at any particular stage. So we should just collapse in the fiddle and get the kill. We should just collapse in the fiddle and get the kill. Javan is doing the red. Again, watching his team. Watching his team. Like, you don't need the red that badly. You should just be helping your team kill the fiddle. There's a Cassio actual rotate, right? TB burned. Like, definitely, if we just help kill the fiddle immediately and without hesitation, we can dip then down to the red afterwards. He's not playing around the reality of the situation. And now he will face the vicissitudes of a losing game. Uh, the struggles. So, oh man. Oh man. That's not good. That is, that, is, that is really not good jungling. And now, of course, you lose this. Oh no, I feel bad for the Zyra. Oh ho ho. But all of this is because... Oh, the pings are coming out. E West Classic. It, it, um, yeah. You see the impact you have as a jungler? The Leeson is now, by the way, 7-1-0. Um... He was 5-1-0 around the time of the dragon. He was 1-1-0 here when he went into this top side. And now you can blame your teammates for sure, but all of this is your own. You, you sowed the seed, right, as, as Jarvan. And now he's gone to the top side here, and Leeson's still here. Doing the grump, like your bot lane cannot step up. Your bot lane cannot step up while you're doing this. So again, he's counter jungling in the wrong moment. And that's the big thing I, I, I hope you can take away from this. A lot of what you should not be doing and a lot of really terrible adaptability. Um, and now look, bot lane don't know where Lee Sin is until he shows here, right? Like they just don't know where he is. They have to respect it. And they got the first kill. So instead of actually supporting them and snowballing that lane, it just hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. Okay. Now he's up here. Lulu's roaming too. Like we just don't have any map control as a red team right now. There's a Fiddle ult. Zyra can react. As well as the bottom lane here. There's a Lee Sin. Now it's tough. Now it's tough. We get the root there, but it's a 3v1. It's, there's nothing that can be done. Like, it's doomed. The Jarvan's gone back to base. He's out of touch. Completely. He's taken himself completely out of the game. And all tempo roams have occurred purely because of his own indecision, misdecision, and bad decisions. And now it's rough, right? It's really, really rough. So now he's going to go counter jungling again. Half a camp. Can we go and kill the, the Cogmore? 
Yeah, we can. We'll chaos there, but that's fine. Teamwork hashtag. Leeson shows up, no camps. On Ward, he's coming down, so we know he's coming down. So Jarvan should match this. Jarvan, come. Jarvan, we know Leeson's coming. Okay, good. Okay, you saw that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I really did have sitting in a bush. <laughs> it really was free. Oh, man. Yeah, we can shove it up, and that's a free dragon at least. So, I mean, we're getting something here, but I, I don't feel like it's got anything to do with his jungling, and the Lee Sin being this fed is truly difficult. We'll see the 14-minute values. Uh, there's the Lulu. Oh, there we go. That's it. Yeah, full combo. Blue team overcommits, as, as they do in this MMR range. Yeah, shut down. Perfect. Okay, so the blue team overcommit. Nice engage by the Java and Yasuo, Zyra, and Ezreal. And team is now rotating to the mid lane. So that, that kind of seems to have offset... A lot of the early boneheaded moves by the Javan. But truly, this is some of the worst jungling I've seen in terms of decision making. And he's been bailed out by mistakes and also by, by his team kind of being in a solid position. So let's get to 14 minutes. Goes top lane to hold this turret. Cataclysm. Grounded. Timo shows up, misses the Q. Did you see that? But uh, he's helping his team for sure. So 14 minutes. Fulp. Oh my god. I don't think, even if I told you guys to guess, I don't think you would have presumed that he was under 5.2. He's literally 4.5k gold, because the camps he's been taking, not that many. Leeson is up on CS, has equal takes of pits, of objectives. By that I mean, uh, he has two pits of grubs, and the job is two pits of dragons. That's a term I'm going to start using just to get like the, the grubs uh, secured. Like, if you snack all three, that's pit one, you got it. If you snack the next three, that's pit two. 7,000 gold for the Leeson. Oh my. Oh my. Like, this is truly some rough, rough jungling. Um, that's really what I wanted to say about this. I was going to jump ahead because I did see a screenshot about Ravenous Sundered Sky is just abysmal. This is, I just randomly clicked here. Okay, so what do we got here? Um, Azrael being overcommitted onto the, the Lee Sin. All right, that's fine. Uh, Yasu is also dead. So, like, n we're just not looking to fight here, right? Ah, but then over the wall. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, just an overcommittal by Ezreal and Yasuo. Replay is lagging a bit. Team is out of position. See, is Jarvan here? Now, I, again, I understand fully that we're a supreme numbers disadvantage. So all we want to do here is ward and retract. We've got shrooms everywhere. Pure Vietnam moment. But the problem is, where are you going down to? Like, there's no reason to go down. Stick with your team and disengage. No one is fighting right now. No one is fighting, excuse me. Q over the wall is max range into the team, honestly, well played by the Leeson. Like, you can't expect that, but... At the very least, you'd be here for disengage. And now you're going to go into the Fiddlesticks, knowing that I've got four people in this area. Alt, Flash Burn, Q again is not going to do the damage. You have Horrific Atomization. 9,000 gold, 14,000 gold to the Leeson now. Like, this death is unnecessary. So, yeah, hopefully you can learn a little bit about what not to do. And also, I think mostly just how to correct yourself. Right? Like, how to put yourself in a position to actually win games by, even if you're making a mistake, correcting those pathways. You know, he had an opportunity here, a Nexus event, to turn Snowball and Pounds and say, you know what, all of this, <laughs> this fuckery can go away. I'm, I'm going to let Leeson have the top quadrant. And he, he just didn't do that, you know? He just didn't do that. And now, yeah, like, I get it, Yasuo was going in. Everyone's a little bit, I think, frustrated in this game. Um, I'm not sure why all the numbers are dis- you know, like he's got three items now finally 39 minutes. They're in a decent position, I think, actually, like, this equal game, they've managed to survive, right? We're gonna go into the least sin here, but Yasuo's not in the picture. Yeah, yeah, like, there's just no reason to be in the pit. Look at your team, don't start it up, don't start it up, just do the- wait, well, he actually didn't, but now just walk away. Just walk away now. Do- do this- Scuttle crab and walk away. Don't go in. Once you go in, you're trapped and your team are not in position on the respawn here and you just die. Yeah, I'm, I'm just randomly clicking around. I just kind of want to see... I kind of want to see what, uh... What scenarios we have here. Like, they actually get a Baron. Steals a Baron. Okay, Chad-like maneuver. Okay, we like that. So he stole the Baron. I'm just doing a little bit of a jungle detail assessment here just to see... What might have occurred. So they're pushing up to mid lane. Ezra's bot lane kills the fiddlesticks. TP from the Yasuo. We have the Lulu crashing down, so we want to sag off. 
Okay, this is fine. Mid lane. There's a pick on the Lulu. That's huge. Huge bot lane. Zonya's. Nice. Javan shows up. Okay. Push, 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 push. Like, this is actually good. They're actually in a winning position right now. Javan steps away. Like, yeah. Yeah. Play by the... <sighs> Lisa, man. <laughs> he do be making plays. Oh, he do be making plays. Okay, so that's where that dragon fight kind of... That's, this is the continuation of that. Yeah. 26-6 in the end. I think they just they just straight up lose the game. Um, oh, what's this? Okay, so what are we at? 85 to 83. 85. I actually have a gold lead right now. Javan's by himself. Yasuo's top lane. Timo's sagging off here a little bit. He's going to go in on the leasing, but look at the positioning, you know? Like, obviously, Fiddle's down here, but this guy does have TP. He's going way deep here. We see the Cassio. We see the Lulu. Look at the angle here. One, two, three. And this guy, does his, he has TP up as well. I don't think this is the fight you want. He's by himself. He's by himself because, look, we see the Lulu cut more. He's by himself. It's just way too deep. No one's able to help him. No one can take this fight. There's a TP from the, the Fiddlesticks coming in. The fight is long since over because he's just dead. There's the Fiddle ult. That's it. That'll be that. That's what caused the loss. Yeah. Same thing again. Just way too deep. Bad engages, bad positioning, bad awareness. Yeah, definitely a what not to do. So uh, with that, I'm going to end it because I think I'm going <laughs> to just burst out in hysterical laughter. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed and, and learned something a little bit. Really enjoy um, kind of going back and forth, sometimes super pro, super positive, what you should be doing. And sometimes it's good to do something like this and have a little laugh together. And hopefully you guys are looking at this job and going, what is he doing? Because that's good. That means you're learning. Right? If you are curious as to why he's making such bad decisions and why he doesn't make the good ones that you think you would make, that's good. You are learning. Be consistent. Get your games in. You will over climb this Javan. I guarantee it because he is definitely going to fall.